Hello and welcome back. Today we're talking about health checks in Route 53. A very powerful tool. Let's see what it's all about. There are three types of health checks. The first one is the endpoint health checks, also called, well, can be, can be called, I call it the vanilla health check or the merry ordinary health check. Here we have a health check. It, its goal, its purpose is to monitor an endpoint, for example, an EC2 instance and uh, check that it's healthy. Um, and let's say if some time passes, the EC2 instance is unhealthy, then the health check will uh, be able to spot that and uh, report that it's unhealthy. How does that happen? Well, in the background, you have all these checkers around the world. Uh, they are the ones monitoring. They're sending uh, HTTP or HTTPS requests, or you can set it up to be TCP only requests uh, to this uh, endpoint. And they're doing so at uh, roughly 30, or every 30 seconds. Each one of them is doing this roughly 30 seconds. And there's uh, for a health check, there will be 15 checkers assigned. So you have 15 checkers sending requests, each one of them sending requests every 30 seconds. They're not coordinated in terms of their time. Uh, so it kind of comes at random overall. And um, yes, so the way it works is if uh, more than 18% of the checkers uh, get a response and it's a valid response, everything's good, or are able to establish a connection and see this instance as healthy, then it is considered healthy. If uh, less than or equal to 18% of them uh, get a response, then it's unhealthy. The way to remember this number is it's ridiculously low. <laughs> when I saw it the first time, I was surprised how low this 18% number is. That's uh, such a low threshold to get to pass a health check. But the reason for that is that these health checkers are spread around the world and some of them can be far for the instance and have latency issues. So basically ADOS accounts for that and requires only at least uh, just over 18% to be passed. Now, the other types of health checks are uh, number two, we've got a calculated health check which is uh, quite simple. We've got a parent health check. It's got child health checks. The child health checks are the ordinary endpoint health checks. They're checking their endpoints and monitoring them. And a parent health check is considered healthy when at least a certain number of uh, these child health checks pass. And it's considered unhealthy if less than that number of uh, child health checks pass uh, are, are healthy. So basically you would use this if you have three different servers running the same thing and you want to make sure that at least, for example, two of them are running at any given point in time. And finally, the third uh, and most probably most versatile and powerful health check is a health check based on CloudWatch Alarm. Here's one use case for it. Let's say you've got an endpoint in a private subnet. So you can't simply just send HTTP or HTTPS requests uh, in there. Uh, what, what are we going to do? Well, that's when you set a CloudWatch alarm to monitor this, uh, in this case, EC2 instance, and you set up the health check to monitor that CloudWatch alarm. And the state of the health check will depend on the state of the alarm. So that's what a, a health check on a CloudWatch alarm uh, does. It, it doesn't have to be a, so used with a private subnet uh, endpoint. It can be used with any kind of endpoint uh, and it will give you more versatility than the other health checks. But the other health checks are nice because they are quite simple and straightforward. So we go look out for questions about health checks on the exam and look out for how they work and these little parameters about the health checkers in the background uh, and the calculated health checks and things like that. Here's a quick summary of what we discussed. I look forward to seeing you back here next time. And until then, enjoy the cloud.